So this old Cincinnati milling machine uh, is a project that I picked up. It's a number two, made in 1940. U.S. Uh, Navy originally ordered it. And uh, it was rebuilt by Dixie Machine Tool Company at one point. Please disregard the mess in this room. Um, I bought the machine at, uh, well, long story, but I'll try to summarize it real quick. Found the machine, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, talked to the seller. He said he saw it running under power. He picked it up. I'm going to put it in his shop. He wanted to do knife work with it. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, we struck a deal. It was in Florida. I drove 13 hours. Uh, show up. It's halfway disassembled. There's no way he physically saw it running under power. And the little tiny garage he had it in, there was like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch to get the thing out the door. So it was a fiasco. I about walked away from the thing. We renegotiated there on the spot. And uh, I ended up buying the thing for a really good price. Well, the problem is, and there's other videos on YouTube of these machines after this issue, which is common, has been fixed. The head, which goes here, the big old guy right there, the down feed, power down feed, or even the non-power units, the drive gears get stripped out and then the head is stuck. I didn't know that. I went to go buy the thing and uh, he tells me, oh, that's why the cover is off the gearbox and the sight glass and stuff was all out of it. So that's why we are where we are. So the way this thing works is we've got some counterweights. Let's see if I can get on this thing without falling. There's two counterweights inside of here. This is looking down inside the head. Two counterweights on a chain, and there's two normally, two big sprockets, I'll show those here in a minute, that carry the counterweights over, and they lift, help lift the, uh, the head, which is on the outside out here. This is looking down through the spindle drive here. So down inside of here, there's a gear that is driven, a pin, or a crown gear, and then there's our gear there. It's kind of like a um, ring and pinion, essentially, in an axle. So to get this thing apart, had to uh, pull the spindle out here. And this is a 50 taper spindle. It's a rather big hoss here. These are the drive splines that are driven by the gear inside of the uh, crown assembly there. And uh, it uses keyed bearings, which some point, someone else, I'm going to guess the guy I bought it from, tried to take this thing apart. They got it apart and then realized they couldn't fix it, went to put it back together, didn't assemble it quite right, kind of boogered up some threads, wedged some stuff together, and actually this bottom bearing was missing. So I've had to source one of those. Luckily, not too terribly hard to find because this bottom one is not keyed. Thankfully, that's cheaper. These keyed bearings... They're pricey. Granted, all it is is a retaining groove ground into the uh, race itself, into the cone, uh, and then the, the precision fit key. Someone with a good surface grinder, you could fix this. So the rack gear is driven through that slot. And normally there's a pinion gear that comes in from the feed box and drives the rack. The side of the weigh the rat the whole head it's 283 pounds without anything on it and then the rack gear bolts into here it's two uh socket cap screws that are behind uh the ways the gibbs here and uh that's what the pinion gear turns and feeds the head up and down these are those uh relay gears that hold the chains it lift the uh, head and this is our rack gear what's left of it uh, you can actually still see some teeth stripped off of the uh, pinion here that uh, would have driven this so 
this would be this would be say we're looking from behind the head the white sheet here would be the head and then the pinion would go into the feed box whether it's being hand operated or power feed and then this pinion would drive the rack now this pinion has seen better days so this hopefully explains the issue that I've got. Oh, and then there's a tapered pin assembly. This is uh, this guy here has a chain link hook to it. It gets pressed in. It's a taper fit. So I'm going to have to machine that into whatever I end up doing for a new rack. So the plan is to mill the top of the uh, existing rack off, pick up a new piece of rack and a matching pinion, turn this down, probably just use a key seat. I'm sure it'll have enough um, capacity and a good, good proper tight fitting key seat uh, to put a new gear on and then match the rack. So then I will use countersunk screws to bolt a new section of rack because I can only get it in one inch thick or an inch and five eighths, which either one, it's still not, it's not thick enough. And then I'll reuse this since it's already drilled and tapped in the correct alignment and location to, uh, to be my shim block. I still have to drill and uh, ream for this uh, lifting eye if I want to use the same mechanism. There's always, if I overdo it, I can maybe drill and tap and retain it from behind. However, I run into some clearance issues on the back side here. Uh, same for the gear. I thought about splining or drilling and tapping to hold the gear in or various different ways to maintain it. Um, but th there's a clearance issue with how close this is to the other uh, there's a pair of, of weights for the counterweight um, assembly that lifts the head up and down. So this is uh, part one of this. This is the teardown. I hope you, this explains how the head system works on these machines. Um, if anyone else runs into this issue, this is how this works. How to get it apart is lift the counterweights out, pull the chain link pins, drive that cross shaft out, lift one counterweight out. Hang on. Okay, back in the other shop. So that thing is seven feet tall, the machine is roughly. That's a big engine crane just for scale. And the counterweight, counterweight is heavy and awkward. So, but they're already drilled and tapped in the top for a lifting eye. It's also drilled and tapped on the side here, but I ended up just, it's easier to get an anchor bolt. I just went and grabbed an eyelet. Uh, it's a 3 8 coarse thread to uh, lift it out of the machine. So lift the weight out. To pull the head, you have to pull the dust cover cap. There's a set screw holding the spindle nut on. Spin the spindle nut off. Remove the key seat, unlike the previous guy that took this thing apart. Remove the key seat, top bearing comes loose. Uh, then you go inside the face of the head through that little access cover there, and then take the lower spindle nut loose, remove the key for this bearing out, and then you can drive the whole spindle out. Put a block on the knee, you know, lift the knee all the way up, drive it down a little bit, lower the knee down, Drive it down, lower the knee until you get close. And then uh, I believe you move the knee all the way forward and there's a gap in the back or the table all the way forward and there's a gap in the back and you can get the spindle out. Once the spindle's out, you can go ahead and pull the gib locks and the covers and then the whole head comes out. Those bearings actually belong in the top of the head there. That's the double bearing race assembly. Um, it, I'm just, it's just set there because it's greasy and gross and I didn't want it floating around. And actually, um, it came out way too easy. 
Uh, so I may have to stake it just to keep it from spinning, but I'll deal with that later. So just FYI, that's how you take the head off of this thing. It's really not terrible. So then to get the pinion shaft out, this whole box assembly comes loose and the whole thing doesn't need to come off off. It just needs to come loose enough to where you can kind of cant it off because the issue is the gear that rides in here, the crown, you'll see it when you take it apart. There's a bevel, it's a worm, worm and crown. Is that what I'm saying? Is that the right type? Anyways, the, brand, the bronze gear, guy over there, you can't get it past because it's it's got a cup in it. So this has to be loose enough that you can get that out of the way. Then there's three retaining bolts that hold a whole bushing assembly in. Once that comes out, the whole gear assembly can come out. So technically, you can get away without having to lift that weight all the way out. I did it just to give myself room to work uh, and see what was going on, see how bad everything was. It wasn't a terrible process. So the, cap, the cross shaft and stuff, that all can, can stay in there if you want it to. I'm just taking it apart, cleaning it up. Eventually, I'm going to take this whole cover off, the whole feed box loose, and actually this copper line that feeds to a fitting here, whoever took this thing apart again last time, broke it off, so I get to fix that too. That sends oil into this box. The reason I know that it was definitely wrong is because the bottom of the counterweight box here had fresh, clean uh, machine uh, oil in it. Not not cutting oil, not uh, lubric um, yeah, not coolant. Coolant's down in the bottom of the knee here, the whole frame. It had actual drive oil, hydrostatic unit. Because this thing runs a high pressure pump, medium pressure, it's like 300 some PSI. There's a pump that uh, actuates the shifting to shift the gears in this. So anyways, hope all that rambling makes some sense. Uh, that's where I am on this project currently, waiting for the uh, blank gears to come in so I can go ahead and start uh, doing some machining. Got to cut some keyways, do a little lathe work. Try to document that, no promises.